Okay, studio, we're going for a rehearsal in ten minutes, with or without the models. If anyone gets within ten feet of the car, <clears throat> don't expect to see Christmas. What's going on? Oh, they'll be here in five minutes. Okay. Yeah, right. You're cutting it a bit fine, aren't you? The girls have just arrived, boss. I hate going public in a rush, and I especially hate being forced into it. Ah, it's only for the dealers. <laughs> Reassure me some more. Security reckon it was someone at the test track sold the photos. Whoever it was, I hope he likes hospital food. You can tell security I'm going to make some big changes. And tell the bimbos, keep smiling, don't fall over. And don't right, touch quiet, the car. Please. We're going to run through. Start voiceover. And cue. Well, a secret as good as this one is bound to get out sooner or later. You've heard all the rumors. Now see it for yourself. The car they're all scrambling to imitate already. The car that's going to change what motoring's all about. From Tronics, the leading automotive design and development company. It's the new Tronics Panzer. There are a lot of people who would love to know what's inside this amazing-looking package. Well, let me tell you that the technology developed by the Whiskids at Tronics' car division leaves all the competition standing. Let's talk to the boss, the head man at Tronics, Mr. David O'Neill. David, this really is a fantasy car, isn't it? The uh, technology inside the Transom may be fantastic, but it's no fantasy, Phil. And is it true that you actually brought the prototype here in an armoured truck? That is absolutely true. Our competitors will pay a king's ransom for a sniff of what's going to put them out of business. Can't you even give us a hint? I will say this, Phil. This car is going to have a built-in level of intelligence that has no parallel in any other model. And what about performance? Very standard all the way. All in a mass-production vehicle with a lot of beauty and a little of the beast. Wow. Thank you, David. Thank you, Phil. Uh, just stop there, will you? Uh, we just need to get the two of you over to the left a little. You're blocking our view of the car. We don't want to miss seeing the money, do we? Hang on a bit. What are those girls doing? Very different test models. One we lost yesterday. Boss wants you people to make sure the second doesn't go the same way. I'm sorry, wh when did you say the car goes into production, Mr. Cray? Well, that's two years away. Well, we don't mass produce cars here, we design prototypes for the manufacturers who do. If the car's not going into production for another two years, why take the risk of a pressure this early? A hand was forced. A rival got some pictures of the body shape. One of our spies told us they were going to pirate the look and call it their own, so we had to preempt that. But it all went wrong. I'd have been a long time living it down. That pair of Sharons could have done me a lot of public damage. But you still have some secrets worth protecting. That's for certain. They didn't get away with quite as much as they thought. I'd like to see their faces right now. It's a fake. Well, they put a transfer body shell in an ordinary car. This won't tell us a single thing about the new engine. Well, that's not unusual practice. What you've got here is a showpiece. This was only meant to be photographed. It was never meant to be driven. So where do they keep all the fancy technology? Almost certainly in a road test model. 
disguised so you wouldn't look at it twice. That's the one you should have lifted. You still have to pay us. <laughs> Why? Because it's not our fault you hired us to steal the wrong car. Look, I know you're both new to this, so let me clarify something. My employers do not hire people to steal. If you get some commercial information we can use, I'm authorized to buy it from you. That's not illegal. But the responsibility for how you come about it is entirely yours. The money is still on the table. You're welcome to try again, if you're interested. And assuming no one else beats you to it. So this is the shape of things to come. What's wrong with it? Well, it's not the kind of shape I had in mind. The body's just a disguise, Ed. The only way to collect genuine road test data is, not surprisingly, to take it out on the road. This version's not supposed to look exciting. All the secret technology is uh, hidden inside. Get in, and I'll show you. The rear view mirror automatically adjusts to the driver's eye line. Holy Toledo. How does it do that? It's magic. Uh, you'll notice there's no ignition key or keypad. We're going to code it to recognize your thumbprint. Tomorrow you'll drive, I'll monitor from base, and Beckett, you follow close in a shadow car? Uh, <laughs> going where? We've got a schedule for you to follow, just normal motoring, nothing adventurous. The job is to drive the course and attract no attention. And Ed, to bring it back in one piece. Roll's one of these trackers and transponder fitted. Where is she? Building security check. And he wanted to have a look around, advise on how to improve it. He said, don't wonder, there was some dangerous hardware about. Yeah, well, she said she'd check in every half hour. Yeah, how long ago was that? Beckett, what's down here? This is the military division. To make what? Toy soldiers. I don't know. They're a design company. They take on work for all sorts of people. Dodgy ones, I bet. <laughs> Rocks! Don't get too close. I don't know what it is. What happened? I went to use the phone and bang. No warning. Uh, maybe we can switch it off. I can't see how. Just hang on, I want to try something. Stand back. Wait! Just wait! What is this thing? It's a, a plasma cage. We've only just installed it. Oh, yeah, for what? Security. Not another project. What project's that? Sorry, can't talk about it. Major Cardenas, these are operatives hired by Mr. O'Neill to advise on project security. Their being here is a mistake. We were given full clearance, Mr. Cray. The job we're doing for the Major's people won't be part of your brief. Please, go back to the car lab. Major, perhaps you'd care to come to the hospitality lounge? scared of him.
I should have gone for the shadow car. At least that sounds sexy. You volunteered. You always want to be the one up front anyway. Is this what we call minimal radio contact? I am bored out of my nut. Let me tell you, the seventh circle of hell is a place where you drive round and round forever and never arrive. Keep going. There's a roadside tea shop in four kilometres. You can stop there and switch the engine off for 15 minutes. Well, can I get out? Yeah. Just don't take your eyes off the goods. Well, well what? Well, what's it like? It's all right. All right? Yeah. Only all right. Plasma cages. <laughs> Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What else do they get up to in that place? I don't think I want to know. I mean, weapons I can understand the secrecy about. But a military vehicle, I mean, it's just a wheelbarrow without the comfort, isn't it? I think it's all right. Anything else? Uh, no, thank you. Just the bill, please. We're in a bit of a rush. trying to find out what O'Neill's like to work for. The only ones who haven't got a bad word to say are the crash test dummies. Beckett, what's happening with the car? Nothing. It looks like a fully automatic gearbox with touch selection. So what's making the suspension bells? Trouble. Grace? Hey, hey, Ronnie! Is an idiot. Don't break the prototype. You can't. Oh, Ross! Ross, something's wrong! Ed, what are you doing now? I'm not doing anything! He doesn't have to. He's triggered the passive safety system. He transfers a car that you can't drive recklessly. If you do, it takes over. Sense its surroundings, read the road ahead. That's what makes it so special. 
Link that to a Routemaster program, feed it with updated traffic information, and we are talking 100% accident-free motoring by the end of the decade. There's a default setting which automatically guides it back to a preset point. In the case of the test car, that means right back to the lab. Just sit back, enjoy the ride, and we'll see you there. Is this what the girlies are after? It's what everyone's trying to get hold of. Beckett, watch out, I can't control it. Don't worry, it avoids cars and people. Tell you, Ross, this. This is going to take a lot of getting used to. Don't worry about having to. You're all fired anyway. Now, wait a minute. After last night's escapade and now this, I thought I was hiring people I could rely on. Trust is a two-way business, Mr. O'Neill. You sent us out there with less than half the information and we still managed to do the job you hired us to do. Now, if things change and we're forced to improvise, we improvise. Look, we kept your investment intact and the egg off your face. Only by luck. Hang luck. on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You didn't give us a schedule for this drive until this morning, yet you must have planned it days ago, right? Now, those girls knew exactly where we'd be. Every piece of electrical equipment in this building needs to be checked, Mr. O'Neill. You've got a leak, and you need us to find it. What's he like to work for? Very tough. He came up the hard way. Made a lot of enemies. His enemies aren't half as scary as some of his friends. Major Cardenas. We developed the passive safety system for military use, and we sell them to all kinds of clients. Why take on these jobs at all if dealing with these people makes everyone so nervous? Money. We're desperate for cash flow. But the transfer's worth a fortune. In the long run, yes, but we're taking huge losses on development. And the boss is making deals with the devil just to keep us going. Completely safe with us, Major Cardenas. I'd stake my life on that. You already have. Yes. There's your spy. What is it? How do your departments communicate with each other? Email. Well, someone's got in here and put a cell phone link on your wire. Now they can call it up and read your email from any phone anywhere. Right, get it disconnected. Then we can worry about how they put it there. I've got another suggestion. These two are obviously going to keep coming at you. Why don't we set them up? Let's 
nearly an hour now. Nothing. Maybe yesterday scared him off. You're disappointed. I'm not? Yes, you are. But I just figured they'd be up for a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Rose? Oh, it's okay. Don't panic. Pull so long. Come on, let's get back. Yeah. All right, Roz. Listen, uh, we're coming over. There's nothing going on here. Don't speak. Just get in the car and drive. Problem. I'm ahead of you. Ed just dropped out of radio contact and there's someone in the car with him. I'm going to the trackers. They're blocking the trackers. Beckett, we do have a problem. One of your trackers? It's kind of a family pet. Quite a pair of operators, aren't you? Mm. We were going to be a rally team, but this looked like a better career move. Stand up, please. I'm uh, sorry we had to drag you along. Don't apologise. I agree to most things when there's a gun pressed up against my neck. It was only a grease gun. Now you tell me. Couldn't do it without your thumbprint, could we? Yeah, right. You guys are taking quite a risk. What are you making out of all this? So far, we're making a loss. Mind you, this is one job we'd do for free. Oh, yeah, why? O'Neill put our dad out of business ten years ago. Losing it all as good as killed him. So when we decided to move into the commercial espionage business, O'Neill was a natural first choice. Dynamite. Hmm. Another little setback for Mr. O'Neill. What are you wasting time for? They're blocking the trackers. They won't know about the transponder till I activate it from here. We'll get one chance to trigger this. Now, if the car's moving when we do it, then we'll have wasted our time. If it's stationary, Beckett and I can fix their position. Excuse me. Ladies. Can I be somewhere else when this thing goes off? Hello? Okay, Rose, ready when you are. Here goes. Transponder. Speed time. Got it, 104 degrees. 104. They're close. They're very close. I can be there in 10 minutes. We can be there in less, assuming. all the film and audio tapes in the case. It won't take them long to find us, but the bomb will go off first. Don't get any ideas about trying to interfere. There were surplus detonators and they're tamper resistant. I see. 
I don't even know your names. Sarita, Davina. Really? What's to stop me just grabbing the stuff in the case? Try it. I did that. Well, 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 the bimbos from hell. Why are you so persistent? Don't know, Uncle Dave. Better just get used to it. I'm not your uncle. But you were Dad's best friend till you ruined him. You're Jack's daughters. Sarita and Davina. Ah, uh, excuse me, there's something I really should say at this point. Shut up, son. You. Come here. This, this is really important. Shut up! There is a... Why don't you do the job properly, Uncle Dave? It's the only way you're going to stop us. Don't imagine it isn't in my mind. Hey! Hey, is that a bomb? That's what I've been trying to say. Get out! an absolute psychopath. If I had my way, we'd walk. I never walked away from a job yet. His problems are personal, ours are professional. You can say that. You didn't get a 12-ball parting in your head. The guy is bent, so bent he could run through a hedge and never touch the thing. Yeah, all right, you two. All right, all right. Now, look, here's the new deal. This time, we don't just sweep the place. We give the entire Tronix operation a complete security overhaul. We make it airtight, and then we stick with it all the way down the line. And what about Major Cardenas and his boys' brigade? We work around them. Now, they're not going to like it much, and we're probably going to like it even less. But that's the way it's got to be. Guys, I get the feeling we're getting deep into something we may have cause to regret. Beckett, look at this. Those are armed guards down there, in the research area. Those are tasers. Stun guns? Yeah. A high-voltage shock disables your target, but you take them alive. This has got to be the most hush-hush armoured vehicle in the civilised world. Don't speculate. Just get it protected. Mr O'Neill, those guards are a complete waste of time. Between us up here and the gates of hell down there, it's well covered. This is all of it? All we could put together from memory. You know as well as I do, this is nothing like the level of hard data we need. We'll get more. What's to get? They found your wiretap on their email, and you blew up the technology. Come on, Bob. We're broke. I'm sorry. What can I say? Maybe you should think about another line of business. Wait. That's what I call an item.
Beckett, what did you do? I don't know. Not by outsiders. I hope Ed's not falling asleep on the job. at all. Do that to the camera then. Isotropic light bulb. It's bright enough to blind anything. Faintest idea what's at stake here. Very clever. Don't waste your time, Beckett. Can't you see he's having his strings pulled? Understand this. That vehicle has got to be brought back, and I don't care who gets hurt to make that happen. I'm fighting for my life here, so don't imagine I'm going to be too concerned about these two. Call them hostages. It's what they are. Give your boss this message. He'll know who it's from. We've each got something the other wants. If he lets my sister go without harming her, I'll tell him where to find his van. He's got 45 minutes, and the clock is ticking. I think those radioactive warning signs on the packaging are the only explanation. The only explanation for what? For why this military vehicle is so special. I think its power unit is an RTG. A what? A radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Put them in satellites. 
They used plutonium as a power source. They run for years, years, and years. Plutonium? Plutonium. Plutonium dioxide. It's reasonably stable, but highly radioactive, of course, and incredibly toxic. These people are flouting all safety laws to produce a new long-range battlefield vehicle. Hmm. What are the risks of the radiation getting out? The people who make them say the safeguards are adequate. Environmental groups say these things are a disaster waiting to happen. And much good may finding it do you. Is my sister in danger? Well, it's pretty scary stuff, but they blow up on their own. As long as nothing breaches the plutonium contained, she'll be safe as eggs. What about dynamite? Now, an RTG puts out intense electromagnetic interference. <laughs> well, that's one hell of a giveaway for what's supposed to be a covert vehicle. Quite, which is why we have to shield the power unit. But if someone tampers with that shielding, you get a lot of local electrical interference. The kind of electrical interference that knocks out traffic lights, right? Quite. Fourteen sets of traffic lights have all gone haywire in the last two hours. See? She has got to be somewhere around here. The RTG powers a sodium sulfur battery. And that's the thing that drives the vehicle. Right. So how come it doesn't just crawl along like a milk float? Well, it doesn't actually drive the car. It drives a flywheel. The flywheel... You're working on me. Well, you did see the plans. It seems a shame to waste a good opportunity. You're feeling incredible. Only fairly. She's got to be somewhere close. Why well, do you know that? Look at the monitor. It's the same interference that's messing up the traffic lights. Make it, I think she's over there. Sister. Was she okay? O'Neill's made a lot of threats, but no one's been hurt. Yet. Now, why don't you put that thing down? Sarita, did you try and strip down the van? You've removed some of the internal shielding, haven't you? I poked around a bit, but it's technology I've never seen before. That's a plutonium powered RTG. It's also been fitted with a passive safety system. But well, I hope you didn't poke around too much. Ah. Uh. Ah? What, what does R ah mean? Well, I took off a few panels and got a few photographs. And I concreted 30 pounds of high explosive into the shelving unit. What's it doing? You took the shields off. You triggered the passive safety system. Internal shielding has been removed. Interference from the RTG has triggered the passive safety device, so it's now on its way back to the factory with a load of dynamite on board. If it goes up, it will spread plutonium everywhere. Half the country will be radioactive. Hello? 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 Hello, Paul? Paul, where are you? Make it 
What are you doing? It'll crash into the jeep. No, it's okay. It avoids cars and people. Mickey! I'm getting on board. I'll try. Anyone blame her? Do it to her! No. There comes a point where you have to cut your losses and quit. We've just reached it. Time to go. He's still breathing. Paul Cray, personal account. I'll be at the city airport in 15 minutes. Just get me on any flight, anywhere. Anywhere! Just get me in the air! Is there any way out? <laughs> Is there any way out? I can't see that. We can't get the bomb away from the plutonium. We just have to get the plutonium away from the bomb. Okay. O'Neill. O'Neill. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. I think that van's headed back here and it does not look good. Can you get us out of here? There. What's on the timer? Four minutes. Maybe the workshop doors will stop it. It's still going to explode. Yeah, but if we get this out, it'll just be a conventional explosion in the yard. Ed and Davina might still have a chance. Well, never mind Ed and Davina. What about us? For God's sake, man. Do one decent thing in your life and get us the hell out of here. I don't care. This is nothing. I'll rebuild it all. And this time, nobody is going to get the opportunity to let me down. Come here. If this thing hits the ground at speed, we hope it's strong enough to take it. Right, oh, I've got to do this one because I can't. Beckett, look, the doors are shut. If we stop you, we can get this out. Oh, where's Ed when you need him? Beckett, the doors are opening. It's not going to stop.
stay back. Go! Quick, get inside, all the way through, and get out the back. Why? Because the back end's outside the plasma cage. Go, wait a second, go! You too know what time it is. Oh, shush, don't distract me. I'm hammering him. Get out of it, it's luck. <laughs> How come when I'm winning it's luck and when you're winning it's skill? Clear those decks and call me Mr. Speed. Oh, yeah. How much longer do you think you're going to be? Uh, with a radioactive thermal generator? I don't know. About 20, 25 years? <laughs>